Well, good afternoon everybody. If you've just joined us, welcome aboard our ex Sydney tram of 1934. We'll be back in the junction in about 45 minutes time, having completed the figure of eight circuit. We have five heritage trams in service at the moment. 17 tram stops in all. You can get on and off at any of the tram stops. travel around uh, the city of Christchurch you'll see a lot of empty spaces where buildings used to be prior to the earthquakes. New construction going on, new buildings, even a bit of wreckage. Yeah. This big new building coming up on our train is two light. This is the new public library. Well worth a visit. It's a must see, must do in Christchurch these days. You can take the elevators there up to the fourth floor balconies. from up there and actually looking down on the former cathedral building here to our left. Most of what you see there is earthquake damage. We're told the building will be fully restored eventually, work starting this year. Not a lot of information forthcoming though. Cathedral Square, busy trace today, food truck Friday, stalls, over to the right of us here, the shuttle bus for the gondola, that'll be leaving shortly at 1 o'clock. And when we leave the square, we'll be turning left into Oxford Terrace, going up through the Cashel Mall retail area, tram stops 3 and beyond. This is stop number 2. 186 years old, or thereabouts, give or take 100 years. Here we are, living work of art. Still keeping people amused. Excuse me. You may be well aware that we have the Buskers Festival on in the city at the moment. Street performers from around the world have descended upon Christchurch just a week ago, Sunday week. Buskers finish, but here on the left, this is the Spiegel tent, main evening venue for the Buskers. Ticket only, there you can purchase tickets around the corner here at the box office. But we have other shows ongoing during the course of the day, one or two stages set up around the place. And there we are, the box office, all the information you need about the World Buskers Festival. Looks like they're in between acts here on the right stage areas. That's the Avon to our right, the river. And this is part of the Riverside Promenade. All hospitality along here for the next two or three city blocks. Tram stop number three. All new buildings up ahead of us. Coming up on our left, we have something like 20 different restaurants, bars and eateries that have opened up here in the last two years or so. Outdoor wining and dining beside the tram tracks. Gets busier as the day progresses, it seems, into the evenings and the small hours. Wonderful atmosphere down here in the evenings. People enjoying themselves. First floor balconies up there as well, more restaurants, nightclub on the corner, live music every evening. Great views of the Avon to our right. Looking past the Bridge of Remembrance, one of the two cenotaphs of the city. So there we are, spoiled for choice. Official Earthquake Memorial Wall is a five minute walk up the river ahead of us, part way there to the left of the flagpole. Earthquake Memorial. Another best new uh, net menu for the muskets. Now we're coming into Casual Wall. Tram stop number four. Down the laneway to the right of us here, the 
Riverside Market, indoor farmers market, seven days a week, visited by thousands of people every day. Cashel Mall, established back in the early 1980s. Prior to that, this was two-way traffic as part of uh, Cashel Street. Mostly new buildings down here now. The original buildings took a hammering and the earthquakes. Most have since been demolished. Out of all of this, we're going to have a city of laneways and courtyards all interconnected. Coming up on our left, Shades Lane goes through to Cashel Square, Hennepin Street. And on the right, the Guthrie Centre. More laneways linking up with Ballantyne's ahead of us on the right hand corner. One of the finest department stores anywhere in New Zealand. Their famous sale on at the moment, just a few days to go, all finishes Sunday, not to be missed. The Valentine's annual sale. The business still family owned, been in the family since the early 1880s. Tram stop number five at Colombo Street. The air bridge is open again to the right of us here, linking Valentine's to the crossing. Ahead of us on the right, big new retail development covering most of the city block, the crossing. A mixture of old and new buildings as you can see. That big building on the right hand corner there used to be Beeth's, another department store many years ago now. Just the shell of the building left, it was gutted as part of the crossing development and strengthened I might add. Looking along Colombo Street to our right, the hill suburb of Kashmir. Wonderful views over the city from up on the hill suburbs. First the crossing opened up just two and a half years ago. Here on the right we have Market Lane right through the middle to a boutique supermarket. The bus interchange, coffee culture in the courtyard. Here on the right hand corner H&M, the international Swedish franchise. Tram stop number 6. We'll be coming down the tram tracks to the left of us here shortly. We'll just move up High Street first. The stop number seven, change direction up there. Cloud cover starting to lift somewhat. The prevailing northeast breeze at the moment, keeping things rather cool. Here we are coming into High Street. Directly ahead of us we can see the top station for the Christchurch gondola. Up there on the skyline, 360 degree views from the top. The cabins run up the hillside there ahead of us. Base station for the gondola, a 20 minute drive from the city. Shuttle bus from Cathedral Square during the course of the day. Next shuttle bus at 2 o'clock for the gondola. Down here we can only go as far as this fence at the moment. The tram tracks ahead of us yet to be completed. We'll stop here, get the tram set up to drive from the other end and we'll go back towards Cathedral Square once again. Tram stop number seven, back in the other direction. Now if you're sitting in the soft seats, they all change over to face the other end of the tram. Oh. footsteps here for a few metres. Go through Cathedral Square once again, this time up towards the Canterbury Museum and the Botanic Gardens. Looking to our right over the arm fence, that was the 12 storey holiday inn, not much left. Going to be another new office retail development on that site. 
a big new glass front of building here to the right of us. That um, houses government departments on three floors. Splash of colour on the corner. Mecca just moved into their new store a few months back, so that's another new building. This is the $80 million ANZ Centre coming up on our left. We watch this building take shape from a big hole in the ground. See if it go down forever. Opened up just over three years ago, a very popular restaurant cafe there in the Patriot. All year shops over the side of us. And looking ahead of us, the oldest building in Cathedral Square, that's the 1879 Post Office building. Recently gutted, it's going to be totally refurbished. Tram stop number eight. So that building was the central post office in Christchurch for around about 100 years. Over there on the left, that's the yellow flowers of the Kofi. That's a native tree to New Zealand. So enjoy these artworks while you can. They'll eventually be obscured by new buildings. Headed back towards Cathedral Square now. Another venue for the buskers coming up in the square. We have Food Truck Friday, a wide variety of foods available until 9 o'clock this evening. Plus the stall holders with all their New Zealand made products. So there we are, another venue for the buskers. Cone shaped sculpture to our left, that's Chalice. Millennium project for the city back in 2000. Survived everything unlike the normal cathedral building to our left, all sorts of damage visible. Then it was on the right, the colonnades of the old government buildings, 1913. The OGB Cafe Bar on the corner. Voted the best bar in Christchurch for the last three years. Wonderful ambience in the old government buildings. You can go in there, have a look around, better still, something to eat or drink at the OGB. Big new building to the right of us, two runner, the new public library. It's now a must see, a must do at Christchurch. Open until 8 o'clock this evening. New convention centre taking shape there ahead of us. More about that later. So there's the deconsecrated cathedral building to our left. They're still trying to figure out how to make the building safe so it can be in. Not bad after nine years or so. So a busy Cathedral Square. When we leave the square this time, we'll go straight ahead up towards the Canterbury Museum and the Botanic Gardens. Tram stop number two. Now if you care to look over to the right of us here, the big new project taking shape over there is the $500 million convention centre. Now that is largely funded by central government. It's scheduled to open October of this year. First bookings for the new convention centre. We're going straight ahead this time down towards the museum and the Botanic Gardens there at the end of the boulevard. Buildings to the right of us here are about to be refurbished. They hope to have these buildings up and running again by the end of the year, including the hotel building on the corner. That's the Spiegel tent to the right, uh, left of us. Main evening venue for the Buskers Festival. Ticket only for the Spiegel tent. Here on the right, this is all earthquake damage. Chambers that opened in the 1880s, a little fun. 
funding available for any repairs at the moment. So that's a bit of a sad story. The Worcester Street Bridge over the river, the Avon. Ramp stop number nine. One of nearly 40 bridges that span the river over its 26 kilometer course through the city and suburbs. Funding on the Avon down to our right. Half hour trip down the river past the town hall. Our main pumping operation at the end of the boulevard where the Cambridge style pumps go up through the Botanic Gardens. Just roll down here across Cambridge Terrace, no power on, saving the planet. Lovely old wooden building here on the left, goes back to 1874, that's when it opened as the Canterbury Club. Still going strong, still in the same building, a private club, business people. Coming up on our right, the City Art Gallery, open until 5 o'clock, it's free, no charge. Walkway to our left behind Ted Polk, the present offices of the City Council. A retrofitted building for Council, that one being in there a bit over nine years now. How will climate change affect us? Interesting. Restaurants either side of us looking for refreshments, bit of brunch, dinner this evening. Stop number 10, the Art Gallery stop. Shops and galleries, the Custard Square bookshop there in the caravan. How about that? Five dollars every book. This is tram stop number 11, one of two tram stops for the Arts Centre. Coming up here on the left over the fence, this is what Earthquake damage looks like, some of the last of the buildings to be worked on. All the work going on inside at the moment. They're about seven years into a ten year repair job. The clock tower open to the public again, main entrance back in university days. You can go through there to the North Quad, the Cloisters, the Great Hall on the corner. You can visit Rutherford's den find out all about the structure of the nuclear atom. There ahead of us, the Canterbury Museum. This is stop number 12. For the museum, the Botanic Gardens, Hunting in the Park, stop number 12. The Natural History Museum open until 5.30, it's free, no charge. Is this the, the gates to the gardens Sir? close Is after this the sunset. Museum here? Rejoin the traffic here once again, just wait for these vehicles to sort themselves out.
private independent high school for boys, one of the oldest and most prestigious schools in New Zealand. School, new school year has only just started. There we are to the left, the wonderful collection of heritage buildings. Over 600 boys at the school. One of the boarding houses we've just passed there on the right. This is Hagley Park, here on the left, one of the largest inner city parks anywhere in the world. Over 180 hectares of sport and recreation. Set up for the noodle market. This week, from 4 o'clock in the afternoon, thousands of people turn up here every evening for the noodle market. A wide variety of Asian foods available from 4 o'clock. Tram stop number 13 coming into our Mars Street. Now the noodle market is cashless, card only. How about that? Creating a few waves there, policy, but never mind, that's how it is. Cashless. Very popular it is, I think it's on for the whole week. The only residential area we pass through, privately owned townhouses here on the left. The old stables of the Wickram Estate, fronting the street here on our left, all that remains of Sir Henry Wickram's estate. He was an early mayor of Christchurch, amongst other things. Then Moraes House here on the left, the little cottage from the 1860s. Built for the Anderson family, a private residence. They were early immigrants from Inverness in Scotland. 1890s, the red building back there on the corner. That was built for um, Samuel Hurst Seeger, prominent early architect of Christchurch. Grandma Square to the left of this one of over 700 parks and gardens in the Greater Christchurch area. It's still known as the Garden City. Stop number 14. Some of the pupils from Cathedral Grammar School enjoying um, Cranmer Square. Back in the old days it was known as Education Square. We had five different schools around the square in those days. Just Cathedral Grammar left now. Now looking ahead of us on the right, the lovely old colonial building, 1870s. Bed and breakfast these days. The Grange, one of the premium B&Bs in the inner city. Continuing along our um, uh, street. Looks like the Fitzroy apartments are getting um, a new fence here. That building survived the earthquakes. One of the first tilt slab buildings to be erected in Christchurch apparently. New apartments here on the left yet to be occupied. We're coming up to stop number 15. left-hand corner, Quake City, the Earthquake Museum. Entrance just around the corner. Now it's a $20 charge for adults at Quake City. It's, you've got to spend at least an hour in there to do the place justice. Coming up ahead of us on the right, the lovely old wooden buildings here. They go back to 1865. Provincial council buildings are known as it was the seat of government, the local parliament, up until 1876, back in the days of provincial government in New Zealand. That's when central government was established in Wellington, 1876. Unfortunately, little funding available for any repairs to the buildings. The stone buildings virtually destroyed. They all need um, a rebuild apparently, even the wooden buildings need new foundations. Last estimates, well in excess of 100 million dollars required in repairs. Former law courts to our left have shifted to big new premises. Now we 
get a good look at the new convention centre coming up on our right to buy gathering place. Scheduled open October. Who's bookings? And over the other side of Victoria Square to our left, the Christchurch Town Hall. Open again to the public, heading up the North Bay during the earthquake repairs, the Town Hall. Statue of Queen Victoria there on the left, the square named after the Queen in 1903. Tram stop number 16 at Colombo Street. Head us on the right, the Crown Plaza Hotel, former office block that survived the earthquakes, now converted into uh, over 200 hotel rooms. Then from the Three Boys Brewery, beside us here on the right, that's one of the major uh, craft beer breweries in Christchurch, Three Boys, any of their products. Good value, all sorts of outlets. Obviously just been to the permit room here on the right, that's um, southern cuisine from India, cuisine from southern India. Looking ahead of us on the left, the whole city block gone, had to be demolished. All that's left is a bit of the wreckage of the former Price Waterhouse Coopers building. Now home to a colony of black filled gulls, decided to nest in the inner city, most unusual. A rare species, totally protected, so while the gulls are there, Nothing will be happening on that side. They usually nest out the country, up the braided rivers of the Canterbury Plains. They are unique to the South Island of New Zealand, totally protected. The black fields and gullies created a huge amount of interest in the last few months. About to turn into New Regent Street. Cafes and shops open for business, other restaurants and bars opening up later in the day. Spot for choice. Tram stop number 17, New Regent Street. Lovely new Regent Street restored back to its original colours, they tell us. This is how the street would have looked when it first opened in April of 1932. No accommodation down here, it's all zone commercial, so the ground floor premises have access to the first floors as well. Most of the cafes and restaurants have seating upstairs. Thank you. 